Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Omicron Protocol. Omicron Protocol is brought to you by Dead Alive Games. It's for one to four players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 45 to 75 minutes. Boy, things can certainly change in only a month's time. The city of San Lazaro was the mecha center, the top, the most industrious, city on the planet for cyber technology. Nothing, no one had come close to their outstanding contributions to humanity. However, in the year 2050, a mysterious virus was unleashed and every countermeasure that was tried, the virus just mutated and got worse, leaving a sea of death and destruction through this city in only days. Now martial law has been enforced on the city of San Lazaro and the infected, known as cybermimetic sociopaths, Sims for short, are on the loose and terrorizing the city. You will have to join a faction powerful enough to take on these foes and perhaps other humans that are trying to do the same thing to stop the dreaded virus and find answers. Omicron Protocol is a skirmish-based game, but very strategic and there are tons of scenarios, making the gameplay varied. And really what's neat about the scenarios is that they are very much story driven, leading you through the story and the virus that is happening to San Lazaro. And along the way, you'll be dealing with Sims. You'll be dealing with other factions, other humans, trying to save the day ultimately and eradicate the virus. So there's several fantastic overview videos out there already for this game as we go into the final couple days of the campaign. Now, we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna actually look at a scenario card. We're gonna look at the anatomy of this card and how a game sets up. So these scenario cards are fantastic for setting up and getting things ready quickly. Now, the rule book has more info about each of the scenarios as well, and for me specifically, what I, intrigues me the most is the story around this virus. I love virus stories. So we're gonna delve into Airdrop and take a closer look at all the details. You have received a broadcast that has penetrated the information blockade surrounding San Lazaro. This message is from someone claiming to represent a group of scientists from outside the city who don't believe the media spin about the virus and are looking for inside information. They provided you with some scanning software and are asking you to scan the infected and at upload the data to an abandoned computer console near Republic Square. They are designing a vaccine, perhaps a purge script, and are willing to provide help for a plan of escape in exchange for data and help with distributing and testing their vaccines. As the sun sets, you arrive at Republic Square, hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. Now, the first thing of note on these scenario cards is the map setup. You'll start with that because you're gonna be placing out in the grid all the different barricades, computer consoles, uh, crates, and different types of uh, computers or whatever it calls for in this area. In this one, obviously we're trying to get the data and upload it. So you place those out into the configuration the map shows. You'll also see that there are sims that get placed out that you're gonna have to deal with as well as spawn points for sims if you make too much noise. And so the thing about noise that's interesting in this game is the fact that it's not really noise you perceive with your ears. It's more of electromagnetic noise, meaning that it's something that you encounter with advanced technology with a character is messing with a targeting computer or you're activating a hacking ability, something like that. So the Sims are super tuned into this and they come from all over the city when they perceive this noise. And so you'll be taking on one of these factions, the survivalists or the peacemakers, and the map also shows you your starting locations for your different heroes or your different faction members as you enter the play area. Now on the back side of the scenario card are all kinds of different categories of things that you're gonna have to be aware of as you play this scenario. The first one, maybe one of the biggest ones, 
beyond the objectives, obviously, is the sim noise spawn table. Now, based on the noise that you're creating with whatever you're doing, hacking at a computer or attacking, you're making noise, you're going to be spawning more of these sims. They're gonna be coming from all over the city to attack you. And so this handy table will show you, based on the level of noise, how many of these sims are going to spawn. And then we have the game end criteria, and that's really just a point level system that will trigger the game end. Next up is the objectives. Now, objectives can be something super simple to more complex things you're doing. This one in particular, airdrop, is fairly complex because you're trying to knock out a sim, basically, download the data, and then upload it to the scientists. So there's a lot of neat story-driven things, even about just this skirmish that's happening. And then that leads into further story-driven adventures. And then it talks about the different types of scoring that are possible to get those three points. Now, there, this one in particular has very a lot of different ways of getting points, but really you're trying to either knock out your opponents, you're trying to knock out the sims, and of course you're gonna do the drop for the different data that you need to get to the scientists. And then you have the terrain layout, which gives you some general idea about the, the hexes and things for this particular layout of the game. And then there's some special rules that come into play as well as you experience this scenario. Ones like when a character is KO'd, it drops any airdrop it's holding in the hex it was KO'd in. So there's several different criteria here. And again, based on the different scenarios that you choose, these are very different per game. And then finally, at the end, there are the tie-breaking conditions. If you both, both teams end up with three points, this gives you a criteria on how to break those ties. And so I really feel like the scenario cards, the story part of this virus-related game and what's happening in this city is really the heart of the game. This is probably some of the stuff I enjoy a ton of because there's a fantastic story thread moving through this virus story. Now, this game is a combat strategy skirmish game. And a couple notes on that combat that I find really interesting is that you have an attack value and you're gonna be rolling six-sided dice based on your attack value. Now, you're gonna be looking at your opponent's dexterity and every dice that you rolled or that is higher than your opponent's dexterity value, you'll use that dice as like currency, so to say, which I find really intriguing. You're gonna use it as currency. So what that means is you're going to be using that currency in order to buy damage to affect your opponent or maybe buy abilities that will affect your opponent. And that's part of the, the things about combat that I really enjoyed about this game. Now, you have your standard things here. You have line of sight, you have different statuses that can happen, you are being stunned or you're KO'd or maybe you're burning, things like that. But it has those normal types of trappings that you find in these types of games. But I really found that attack structure and how you uh, use your points, like I said, as currency almost, to do certain things uh, in the way of damage or abilities is really my favorite part of the combat. All right, so that's just a brief look at the game. You know, the, like I said, the scenarios are what I find super interesting and the story-driven part of that. Now, each scenario is gonna be different, and so each game, the results and the win conditions are very different as well. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, I find virus stories super intriguing. So this game already had a leg up for me. Now, again, I really liked the, the tactical strategy part of how attacking worked. That was really interesting. And I even found that the folks that we played with who really weren't into skirmish-based games found that also something they enjoyed. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.